All right, so right now I'm working with two layers of fabric. I have my main fabric and then I have my lining fabric and it's just one layer. Then I lay my pattern pieces on top. Now I have the selvage edges over on this side and then also the selvage edges over here on this side. And then when you lay out the pattern pieces, make sure that this grain line is running parallel to the selvage. Okay, so the tie is actually being cut out on the cross grain because uh, that's where it gives it the most stretch. Right, now you have the front tie and you have the back tie piece. What you want to go ahead and do is uh, with the front side facing up, with the right side of the front facing up, take the back piece. And now you have the right side touching the right side. You want to line up those notches. And you want to place a pin there. Alright, using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, go ahead and lower your needle, begin sewing, and backstitch at both ends. Go ahead and press this seam open. Repeat for the lining. All right, then you'll want to go ahead and trim these. All right, next with the right sides facing each other, you want to pin. And you want to pin here, here, and here, because we're going to sew along this area. And then also at the other end. Quick tip, pin at one end first, then smooth everything out. Before pinning the other side, because if this if anything extends farther, you want to even it out. Um, you'll want to even it out before sewing it together. All right, using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, uh, starting at one end. As you get closer to the point, you want to stop about 3 8 of an inch away. You want to lift up your presser foot and pivot. As you can see, I needed to sew a little bit more. And then now it's at 3 8 of an inch away. And so I'm going to continue sewing. Next, right at that point, we're going to trim it down. All right, next you can go ahead and turn it to the right side facing out and go ahead and push out that point. I'm using my finger and if you would like for an extra crisp point, you can take a pin and pick that out but be sure to uh, make sure you're careful so you don't break any of your stitches if you decide to use a pin. Now you can take this to your iron and give both ends a nice press. All right, now take your tie and fold it in half and pin in place. All right, starting at one end, go ahead and line it up with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, next what you wanna go ahead and do is open up the tie 
and you want to center the seam. So this seam should be running parallel, should be uh, in line with this point. And then you want to um, press the seam open. And you want to keep, keep the seam uh, centered. Alright, after pressing the seam open, it should be nice and centered. Next you could take a safety pin and pin it to the small end. And then what you want to do is begin feeding it through. As soon as you see the safety pin coming out on the other side, go ahead and take it off and then just by hand pull the rest of the tie through. Alright, next go ahead and make sure that your seam is nicely centered and you want to give this a nice press on both sides. All right, lastly, we need to make the tie keeper. So my rectangle measures three inches by two inches. All right, to hide the raw edges of my tie keeper, the first thing that I did was fold in the shorter side, the two inch side. I folded those both in, both edges in, uh, about a half an inch. And then on the opposite side, I just went ahead and uh, folded those in and then this is what I have as a finished product. Okay, next what you want to do is from the bottom, you want to measure up uh, eight and a half inches, and I went ahead and marked it with a pen. And then what you want to do is take the tie keeper, place it over. Next, go ahead and thread a hand needle and you're going to slip stitch the tie keeper to your tie. Now make sure you don't push the needle all the way through uh, to the front of the tie. You're only going to catch it on the back. So what I like to do is pinch the fabric to get the front out of my way before uh, pushing my hand needle through. And I'm keeping, I'm doing a slip stitch, so I'm pushing it through that uh, fold of the Slipping it through the fold of the tie keeper so that the stitches are hidden and then I bring it through the back of the tie. After you're done slip stitching both ends, go ahead and give your tie a nice press and you are all finished. Alright, for my pocket square, I went ahead and cut out a square that is 13 inches all the way around. So 13 inches, 13 inches, 13, 13. Next, go ahead and flip your pocket square to the wrong side facing up. We're getting ready to do a narrow hem. So on my index card here, I have a 5 eighths of an inch line drawn. So I'm going to first fold up the edge to meet that 5 eighths of an inch mark. I'm going to take my iron and press all the way down. Then what you want to do is now open up that seam and you want to fold that edge to meet the crease and then fold it in again. That's going to hide the raw edge on the inside. Then take your iron and press. And you're going to do that all the way down and you're going to repeat this process on the other three sides as well. All right, I'm using a 1 4th of an inch seam allowance. All right, when you get about one fourth of an inch away, pause, lift up your presser foot, keep your needle in your fabric, and then continue sewing. You're going to repeat this process on all of the sides, and then once you are finished, you can take it to your iron, give it a nice press, and you are all done.